Hallelujah. So this morning, I am going to talk about being an overcoming and receiving your birthright. We all have a birthright, correct? Y'all know we got a birthright in Christ. We have a birthright. But it don't come easy. It don't come easy. So I'm going to pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for just being Lord. Lord, we ask you for nothing else but you. All of you, Father. Father, be over our lives. Keep us and guide us, Father God. Strengthen us, Father. Father God, as I bring forth what you have given me, Father. Father God, I ask that I decrease and you increase, Father. Father God, I need them to see you, Father, that they would be able to take this and use this to help others. Father God, we need you like never before. We can't do nothing without you, God. Help us to do everything in you and to kill our flesh, oh God. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you and we adore you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Whew. When I said it just was a struggle um, to be here today, to even get out of my bed, that's the place that I've been. But God, he said, I love you, daughter. You got to push. And so I, as Miss Rhonda is just like all up in my Kool-Aid, I'm like, oh, my God. She was just all in my Kool-Aid because I've kind of been isolated, keeping to myself, not really wanting to do anything but God. And he said, no, you cannot give up. You've got to push and do what I've called you to do no matter what. So I'm here today, and I thank him for it. So I will be coming from um, Genesis. Um, going to talk a little bit about Joseph. I'll come from Genesis 37, 1 through 11. And I will not be before you long today. I will not be keeping you long. Um, Jacob lived in the land of Canaan, where his father was an immigrant. This is the account of Jacob's descendants. Joseph was 17 years old and tended the flock with his brothers. While he was helping the sons of Beliah and Zepha, his father's wife, Joseph, told their fathers unflattering things about them. So, you know, Joseph was kind of like that little telltale. You know, everybody's family had the brother or their sister. If you have siblings, you have that one that was a tattletale. You could always get the information from them. Mine was Shayla. She would give me everything. <laughs> Any information I needed, she had it. My sister Artie, my mom could get all the information from her. So everybody's family has that tattletale. So that was Joseph, which kind of made his brothers be like, we don't like him. You know, we got to hide stuff from him because we don't want him to see because if he sees, he's going to tell it. So Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, which made him made them hate him even more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. Well, you know, he's naive. He's like, hey, I'll tell you about this dream I had. Thinking that, you know, they're going to be happy for him. You know, because he had love in his heart for them. They just didn't have it for, them, for him. Amen? So he said to them, listen to this dream I had. When we were binding stalks of grain in the field, my stock got up and stood upright, while your stock gathered around it and bowed down to my stock. Now, you know, the brothers, they was like, what? We, we did what? We ain't bowing down to you, you know? So they're thinking, you know, this is causing more hate in their hearts because, you know, bow down to what? We ain't bowing down to you. You know, I, I think back when I was younger, there's not one of my brothers or sisters that I'm going to bow down to or believe that I was supposed to bow down to, that in life that I would ever come to a place where I was going to bow down to them. Amen? Amen. 
So, and when we look at, look at this dream, it was a very powerful dream, right? It was a powerful dream. And like I said, him loving his brothers, in spite of the hate that they held in their heart, for him, he trusted his brothers to share the dream with them, right? He, he shared his dreams. He shared his vision that God had given him. There are times in our life that we can't share what God has given us. Amen? There are um, times that, you know, we get excited. Oh, God gave me this dream, and oh, I got to tell you what the dream is. We didn't think, ask God, am I supposed to share that? Am I supposed to give? Is it time to release that? Because there's always a God's timing for everything. Amen? Amen? We have to believe, and we can't believe that everybody is for us, because that's just not the way that the world is. Everybody is not for us. There are some that are, true enough, but there are some that are like, what? I'm going to take that dream. I'm going to start that business before you do. You know, so we have to be very careful about sharing our dreams and our visions because they are part of our birthright. Our birthright consists of our dreams and visions that God has given us. He's the builder of your birthright. He, he gave you your birthright. He already had it ready for you when he formed you in your mother's womb. Amen? Amen. So we have to be very careful about sharing things that God has given us. Be sure to go to prayer and asking before we release what God has given us because what he's given you is for you. And what, he, what he's given to Sister Deb or Elder Rhonda is for them. Amen? Amen? So his brother said to him, will you really be our king or rule over us? So they hated him even more because of the dream he told them. Then Joseph had another dream and described it to his brothers. He didn't learn the first time, okay? <laughs> he didn't even learn from the first time. He, said, he went right back and started doing it again. Let me tell you about this dream I had, you know? Which made them hate him even more. He said, I've just dreamed again. And this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Now, you know, they really got mad. Like, come on now. You dream me having all these dreams about somebody bowing down to you? Nah, that can't be. You know, because that's what you would think. What? What are you talking about? You're weird. You know, as the young people would say, you're weird. You know, that's what you kind of would think if your, your brother or your sister kept coming to you talking about people bowing down to you. Amen? So, um, when he described it to his father and his brothers, his father scolded him and said to him, what kind of dreams are you having? What have, what have you dreamed? Am I, your, am, am I and your brothers supposed to bow down to the ground in front of you? Who are you? You're a 17-year-old that tends the flock, the fields. We bow, I'm your dad, I'm going to bow down to you. No way. No way. So, but his father, his brothers were jealous of him. And his father took note of that, took note of the matter. So they had a, what would you say, a brother, sister jealousy of him because of his dreams, because of the way his father treated him different, and because he was Rachel's son. All those things had built jealousy in the brothers. Amen? And we all know that that spirit of jealousy can be something else. <laughs> when it rises up, you better watch out because it can cause people to do things that they wouldn't normally do and sometimes not even recognize that they're acting out of the spirit of jealousy. Amen? We can see here that Joseph 
being honest and telling them about his dream that the Lord had given him. And because his father and his brothers had no idea of his birthright. Those dreams were part of his birthright. But they had no idea that this was part of his birthright. That coat that his father gave him, colorful, beautiful, part of his birthright. It represented his birthright to all that his father was giving him. The brothers had no idea what his birthright was. They were like, we're going to bow down to you and no. They, there are times when nobody, not even the closest person to you, will understand things that are leading you to your birthright. You know, it, it, sometimes your spouse won't even understand. Um, and I, for those that are married, normally your spouse is the closest to you. And they don't even understand what your birthright is because that is between you and God. He designed that specifically for you. It's personal. You know, you have to consider your birthright as personal. It's personal. It's not public. It's not something for everyone. You know? So, because we are human, we are always looking for man's approval. Man's approval is not part of our birthright. And if you think about it, when you start in school, they begin to groom you to want man's approval. You're looking for the teacher to give you a star. You're looking for the teacher to give you praise. That is planting seeds inside of us for man's approval. If you think about it, just think about when, when, even when the little kids are in elementary, when you're in elementary school, who's the most reverenced person that's there in your life every day, that teacher. And you want everything from her. You want to take her an apple. You want her, you know, you want to be the best. That she likes you, you know, because you're wanting man's approval. But wonder if we were taught God want to want God's approval. Wonder if that was taught. Where would we be? Woo, we'd be even higher today. There's a whole lot of things we would have evaded if we were taught to want God's approval and not man's approval. Because now today, I, you want to be skinny, you want to you, you, you wanna wear the same things that they're wearing, even in school, don't, to fit into whatever crowd, you wanted them shoes, you needed that jacket. For me, it was that jelly jacket. I had to have that jelly jacket with the shoes to match, you know? I couldn't wear floor burners. They were called floor burners in our day. No shoes from Kmart, none of that. I couldn't have none of that because I wanted to fit into the, this crowd, the popular crowd over here. I don't know about y'all, but I know everybody wanted to fit in some crowd. And when you were in school, you wanted those people's approval. And all of that takes away from our birthright. From our birthright. We're not taught to want our birthright. We're taught to want the things of the world when we are children. That's why it's important as parents, as grandparents, to install in our grandchildren and children what their birthright is, who their birthright comes from. Amen? It's important because we have these kids walking around today and, and that's all they care about, uh, including my grandkids. My grandkids are spoiled rotten. It, it makes no sense to me. I'm like, can you say a scripture for me? Can you do that? Why you got this $400, uh, I don't know what it's called, but they put the thing on and they're virtually in the game and all this old kind of stuff. And you're just like, hold on. I had asked my son, I'm like, he's wearing $400 shoes. He's got a $400 virtual thing on his head. Does he know the Bible? Can he say a prayer? Let's keep it real. That, that's real. I'm like, uh-uh. So what's it going to be when he grows up? He's going to expect those things. Am I right or am I wrong? 
And what's going to happen when he can't get those things? He's going to look to the dope man or the game man so he can get in the game, so he can keep this much money in his pocket. This is what happens. This is real life. This is real. And I'm telling my son, I said, no more. I said, your weekends is my weekend. They're going to meet with me to church. They got to learn somewhere. Got to stop this madness. The world taking over and stealing our children's birthright. We're supposed to be creating generational wealth for our children and our grandchildren in Christ. That's generational wealth in him. Our birthright. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it ain't just y'all, it's me too. They think I'm mean grandma because now I'm making them, I'm changing their life around. I'll just be mean grandma because I know it's going to help them in the future. No, you're not going to sit and play a game. Turn that game off. Go outside. Don't come back. That's what my grandparents used to do to me. Don't come back. You ain't running it out my door. And that's just what I did to them this weekend when I kept them. Get out. Goodbye. Take the basketball, take the football, and don't come back. Leave your phones. You better play hopscotch, jump rope. I don't care what you play, but you ain't coming back in here. We have to change things for our children. We cannot be letting them sucked in by the devil on that phone just like this. Constant. Ain't a noise going on. They're just constant. My grandson got so angry, he had a 75-inch television. He got so mad, he put a hoe in the TV because of the game. Because he got so mad at the game. I said, I rebuke that demon in the name of Jesus. That's a demon over his life. And I rebuke it and you release him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And no, you will not get another TV. You will not. I told my son and his mama, y'all better not buy him another one. No. It has to stop. These kids are being drawn. How do you get so angry that you hit the TV and, and break it. At a, what, I think it's 10? No, it has to stop. But these things are keeping our children and our children's children from their birthright. And we, as the church, as Christians, have to wake up. It's time to wake up to these things. Amen? So, we went so far and we've learned that we cannot trust man's approval. We have to learn to lean on God's approval. So we all know that Joseph's father sent him to look for his brothers. And because of the hate that they had for him, um, because of the fear of his dreams, that his dreams caused in them, they stripped him of his beautiful coat and gave him and threw him in an empty cistern. Now, y'all, I had to look up what cistern was because in my eyes, a cistern is a clay uh, water pitcher that you pour water up, right? That's what I thought. I thought, cistern, okay, I need to understand this. So when I looked up the definition of cistern, it is a Hebrew word is bore, which means receptacle for water conveyed to it. Cisterns are frequently mentioned in scripture of the scarcity of springs in Palestine that made it necessary to collect rainwater in reservoirs and cisterns. So they dug a hole to collect the rainwater so that they were able to get water because it was scarce, springs were scarce there. They, they weren't, you couldn't find them a lot, around a lot. So that is why they built the cisterns. And they threw Joseph in an empty one. Then they start to feel guilty. They're like, dang, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
then they started to feel guilty about putting their brother in the little sister. They're like, dang, we done threw our brother and the sister. We gonna, we've done plotted, we're going to kill them. What are we going to do? You know, so they decided amongst themselves, well, what are we going to do? They decided, well, let's sell him. We could sell him and get some money. You know, that's, that, was the, that was their thoughts. Let's sell him. So they sold him into slavery, not knowing that their plan of evil would end up being for Joseph's good. Amen? Amen. He would still get his birthright in Christ. Joseph ended up in Egypt. Amen? Verse 39 tells us, and you can go back and read that. I'm just going to go over it. Uh, verse 39 tells us that Joseph was sold to Potiphar. And he's doing good at Pot in Potiphar's house. He's like, man, you know, I done been through so much. Now imagine how he's feeling because he done been sold. His brothers hate him. He done been put down in the cistern. You know, he's, he, the warfare is coming back to back to back to back. But he finally gets to Potiphar's house. Potiphar likes him, treating him good. He's thinking, uh, finally, I'm here. This must be it. No. Potiphar's wife, being a snake, decides that she wants to sleep with him. And he's like, no. I'm loyal to my master. I'm not sleeping with you. And she's like, oh, you want to sleep with me, huh? So she goes and she lies. She puts these lies on him. Well, of course, as the dutiful husband, he believes the wife, and he has Joseph thrown in jail. Okay, now, he done been <laughs> hated by his brothers, thrown in the cistern, sold, and now I'm in jail. And I ain't did nothing. I ain't did anything wrong. I'm walking around like, hey, everybody. I like everybody. And all this stuff is just coming, coming, coming because of his birthright. They want to steal the birthright. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, understanding that I don't know about nobody else, but I understand, Joseph. I can understand it. You know, when things are coming back to back to back, to back, and you think, whoo, I finally got a breath, everything, and then back to back, you just barely getting to breathe, and back to back to back, finally you say, I can't, you, you, you won't even have strength anymore, and you start windmilling, help me, help me, but they're coming too fast, things are coming at you too fast, the enemy is coming at you, and you get tired, and you want to isolate, you don't want to show nobody, you don't want to see nobody, you barely can pray, this is, I know he had to be there because I am a witness. I am a witness of things just coming and coming and coming. You know? But God, but God, but God. But you don't, when you're in that place, it's very, very hard to see God. I'm going to keep it real. I ain't finna sit up here and say, oh, I was just joy. No, no. <laughs> I was not. I'm like, I quit. I don't want to do this. But thank God for our apostle. I thank God for Velda, because those two were so connected. They know when I'm putting on the mask to smile and act like everything's OK, put on all the clothes like everything's fine. It's, I was not OK. Was not, and they understood that. But Joseph didn't have nobody but God. Right? He had nobody but God. But God began, I'm laying there, you guys, hmm, probably on day four. I get up and go to work. Everybody's like, what's wrong with you? Nothing. You know, I'm just, do, I'm just here to do my job. Don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. Let me do my thing. <laughs> Leave me alone. This is the place that I'm in. I'm, I'm just like, nah, I'm not with it. And I don't feel like the fake and the phony. Yeah, get out of here with that. You know, that's how I felt. You know, I'm, 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 I like to be real. Um, 
So probably about mm, into my second week of laying in my bed and not really talking to anybody, not really answering my phone, um, scared to go to the doctor because I don't want them to put me on no medicine. So then I can really be flipped out and stuck on some drugs because I've seen that happen with my children. So I'm scared to ask them for anything that's going to help me, you know, mentally. Um, so I was laying there and I said, God, Apostle reached out to me and she said, can we switch weekends? I said, oh, weekend? Oh. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, you know, that I even had to get up here. So I said, yeah, I'll switch weekends with you. And I told God, I said, oh, Lord, because all of me wanted to call and say, I'll just give up. I don't really want to do this no more. I don't feel like I'm in a place to do this no more. And I don't want to do it. So I prayed. I said, God. I don't want to do this anymore. I love you, but I just want to be a bench sitter. I don't want to do none of your stuff. I don't want to move in none of your visions. You done gave me all that. You can have all that. I just, I don't want it anymore. You know, and I'm being real. This is how I felt, and I'm crying, and I don't know, and I just feel empty. And no matter what I do, it, it doesn't feel like I can get full. Yeah. And it's funny. Because I get off work on Friday, and here he goes. He thinks he gave me the final blow. He, I, I pulled in my parking lot, and I found out a whole bunch of other stuff. But I didn't cry, y'all. No tears rolled down. I, I heard the Lord say, <laughs> he's still in your birthright. Are you going to let him have it? Or are you going to fight from a place of victory? Are you going to fight and know that I am your God and that no matter what, I have you. No matter what, I've seen you through the valley. I've walked with you. You know where you come from. You've been an alcoholic. You've been a drug addict. But yet you still stand. I have been with you. You have the victory. You are a winner. Get up out of that bed. Stand up on your feet. You stand tall and hold your head high because I know who I am in you. Do you know who I am in you? All I could do was cry, y'all, and I said, okay, devil, I back you up in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will live and not die. I will live in this world. Fear of suicide, you got to go. Fear of death, you got to go. Get off of me. Get off of me. And God said, all I could do, y'all, was drop on my knees. I didn't even care nothing about the situation. Still don't care. I'm on my knees, standing, believing that he's going to see me through no matter what. And I'm going to get my birthright. You can't have it. You can't have my birthright. I am who God says I am. I will walk in my purpose no matter what it looks like. I am blessed in the middle of the way. I'm still standing. Amen. Yes. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Oh, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Who I thank you. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. And I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you. Who I thank you, God. Whew. Mm. I thank God for everything. And I just encourage you guys to ask God, what is your birthright? 
What is it that he desires from you? What is it that Satan and his imps are fighting you to keep you from? Ask the Lord to show you and ask him to stand with you. To stand in that, to help you to stand when you don't have no strength. Ask him to be your strength. Ask him, because he will show you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And he ain't never left me. Even though the enemy tried to make me believe he left me, he didn't leave me, I left him. So I just encourage you today to know and never let Satan Steal your birthright. Amen. So, Father, we thank you and we adore you. We thank you for our birthright, God. We thank you that no matter what, you're with us. We thank you, God, that even in the midst, you walk with us. You help us through the winds and the waves of the storm, oh God. Continue to be with us, oh God. Open our ears that we hear you clearly. Remove the scales from our eyes that we see you, God. And help us to remember in battle, you gave us the gear to put on, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. Our loins are girded with the belt of truth. We have our sword and shield, God, to shield every fiery dart of the enemy in Jesus' name. God, continue to move on our very behalf. Guide our feet and lead us, Lord. We thank you, Father. I believe everybody in here knows you, Father, and have given their life to you. But if there's someone and some reason that you need prayer, the altar is open. We thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen.